Energy savers come in a variety of different shapes and designs. What's more, you can now choose energy savers that light up instantly. They're also available in different color temperatures. If you're looking for an easy way to save energy and reduce your lighting bills, energy savers are a great choice. What's wrong with just a good old fashioned light bulb? Why not just let me keep my light bulb? I've been telling you for some time now about this light bulb ban and yesterday was talking about the the coalition between the green groups and politicians in Ottawa and Washington trying to curry favor with them and they decided to ban the good old fashioned light bulb. But was that it? Is that all that happened? Was it an appeasement of the green groups or was there something more at play like crony capitalism? Companies like Philips, GE, Sylvania lobbying to get the light bulb banned so they could make more money off their energy savers. Mark Morano is with Climate Depot. He's the founder of that organization, joins us now from Washington. And Mark, there seems to be a growing consensus that, yep, there was some crony capitalism going on here, some scratch my back so I can make higher profit motive. Yeah, I mean, the story is very clear. This was not about consumer choice winning or a victory for the planet or sensible environmental policies winning out. This was very clearly, you mentioned it, Sylvania, GE, um, and, uh, and Phillips, and, and Phillips, all getting together, basically afraid because the, the incandescent light bulbs didn't have a high profit margin. And they were also afraid of upstart competitor getting a huge contract with Walmart. So in 2007, they, they, they helped lobby to get this, this ban started. And by banning incandescent light bulbs, they now move over to CFL, the compact fluorescence, where 75% of them are made in China. GE has plants there. The profit margin's much better. The, the uh, bulbs cost more. And the, uh, they, they also had a partnership, uh, G, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Phillips had a partnership with the National Resources Defense Council. Uh, and, uh, and this is uh, th this they, is this is yes. the part that blows my mind. Phillips was actually funding the Natural Resources Defense Council, uh, an organization we've come to know and love for their uh, virulent opposition yes. to the Keystone XL pipeline. But Phillips funded them to get this grassroots campaign going to to push for the light bulb ban. Yes, they did, and this this was a, a huge deal. This was presented as not a light bulb ban. And GE and Philips, and they were all very concerned about saying, hey, we're not for banning. We just want, we want a uniform standard. And we want to make sure that the, the, the light bulbs are more efficient. And by doing so, they knew that they were in effect and it was a de facto ban on incandescent light bulbs. This was all about the profit motive. And, and the fact that it was the lighting, the three big lighting companies lobbying Congress was one of the reasons Republicans even supported it. Fred Upton, actually, one of his reasons for supporting this bill Bill said, well, the, the, light, the, lighting, the lighting companies themselves support it, so it must be good. No, it must crush competition, which is what they tried to do. They used the power of government to crush any upstart competition, oh. ban a non-unprofitable light bulb, and then move it overseas where they can make, rake in a lot more profits with the contract I, uh, The light bulbs that I pulled out, these are from under the, uh, the sink in our... Uh, office kitchen here it's by sunbeam it's not one of the big threes this is the competition right. they wanted to crush so that they would be able to say well you've got to move to leds you got to move to halogens you got to move to compact fluorescence let's go back to the the ground game in the the pre-2007 era when washington and ottawa decided at the same time they would they would go in conjunction they would make sure we had standard regulations for the north american market as the law, you said the lobbying, that the company said they wanted a common standard. Ontario, Canada's biggest market, was looking at a light bulb ban, just a provincial light bulb ban. California, your biggest market, was looking for a light bulb ban. Both uh, run by far left liberals, even when they elect Republicans in California, the far left liberals. Uh, yeah. th I mean, they're, they're basically being lobbied by people like Natural Resources Defense Council to say, get this going. Subjurisdictional uh, bans come into place at the state and provincial level, and then the companies have their opportunity to say, we need a common standard, help us out here. That's pretty much how yes, it went how down. It 
for decades, California has always led the way. They tried to do this with greenhouse gas emissions. They come out with what you'd call draconian, unrealistic standards. And then the companies have a, a cover, if you will, to say, hey, look, we can't manufacture one standard for California, the other standard for the other four. We need a uniform standard. And that's how they get the, the camel's nose under the tent. And then, of course, we all, it becomes the, Calif the, the California, uh, Californianization of both the United States and Canada. And you don't want that because California is all about central planning and crushing free markets and crushing consumer choice. And that's what this light bulb ban is all about. They're not allowing consumers to make these choices. They're banning them. First 100 watt bulbs, then 75, now the 40 and 60 watt bulbs. Uh, it's not illegal to own them yet, but it's, you know, given our current environment, that doesn't seem that far fetched that they're going to be raiding homes now. You know, in, in America, we've actually had armed federal agents raid orange juice manufacturers because they, they called the orange juice fresh and it was actually from concentrate. So wacky things happen <laughs> when the power of the state grows and the light bulb ban is the most visible. This is a victim of global warming hysteria because well, that's ultimately what's at the root here. If they start saying that, uh, that they're going to raid homes, then there are none in my basement. None whatsoever. Yeah. Ignore <laughs> anything I've said before. Mark, great talking to you. Thanks so much for, uh, for dropping by again Thank today. Thank you very much.